I V M. Someone asked me recently, uh, why do I do this podcast? And I had to think about it, right? Um, on one hand, it helps feed my need to have conversations all the time about so many things and absorb as much new information into my mind. But the biggest reason I do this or rather the reason that satisfies me the most is that I get to give something to young people which I kind of feel they don't get enough of. Um, a clear POV on what a creative professional's life entails. Because that's what we all wanted, right? When we started off, um, to just understand without being faff to, to just be spoken to like equals, and that's the most enriching thing that this podcast has done to me in 2019. And as we start off 2020, um, that's also leading many of the choices that I'm kind of making about where the content of this show and, and a lot of most things that I'm kind of working on um, will lead. Um, but more on that um, as this year goes ahead. Um, it's also great to start this year with an episode on youth culture. Or rather, reimagining it, um, because that is the one thing that is rising as not just content model, or rather, not just as a content model, but as a growing business around us. Right? Um, it's no longer a one size fits all youth content model. It's about being authentic, about listening, about truly building experiences that the young feel they relate to, and not something where they're being pandered to. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to dig in this a little further um, as we start off 2020. um with the guys behind the under 25 summit anto and shreyans to not just understand how the under 25 summit came about but also to understand how they're building youth experiences by engaging in unique ways with their audience and also how they both crossed the age of 25 this year um and how they look at the space now compared to when they started off um, i'm varun dugirala co-founder and co-chief of the glitch and we'll be right back with the first episode of 2020 of advertising is dead Welcome to Peak Planet, a new podcast where we delve into the fallouts of the growth path that we and indeed much of the world has chosen. Sustainable growth is the buzzword. Until we nail that down, we need to ensure that we keep our population healthy and also have the resources for our increasingly urban lifestyles. I'm Karthik Ganesan, a researcher at the Council on Energy, Environment and Water, a Delhi-based policy research institute. Where for almost a decade, we've been trying to explain and change the use, reuse, and misuse of our resources. In the first season of Peak Planet, we take up air pollution, public enemy number one, and an invisible one at that. Increasingly, the most important risk factor for adverse health outcomes, air pollution has become the most unwanted byproduct for an aggressively growing economy. Over four episodes, we find out how prepared our systems are to deal with this crisis. You can catch the entire first season of Peak Planet out now on the IVM Podcasts app or website, or wherever you get your podcast from. Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. Um, I've got two special guests today, who I think I want them to explain a because I I mispronounced one person's name uh, as Shreyas instead of Shreyans, <laughs> and and I've asked the other person how to pronounce his name, which is Anto. Um, and you guys uh, founded a company called Under Twenty Five. Um, and for people who are over twenty five like me, explain what Under Twenty Five is. Um, I'll take this one. Shreyans, go for it, Anto. Go for it. <laughs> Uh, so under 25 technically um a dream that we've had uh, ever since we were in college mm. um shreyans and i went to the same college we went to christ university mm-hmm. so we were in our 12th grade and we were extremely frustrated by what was happening within the classroom alone because most of what we learned happened outside of the four walls of the classroom that's always standard no? that's yeah. the that's the thing about college life mm. in india and specifically yeah. because also it's a, a very rich time with the number of relationships the friends mm. the kind of experiences that you have i believe that the phase of life that you really need to uh, relive every single day is mm. is when you're under the age of 25 yeah. it's a phase of uh, irrational optimism absolute weird weird crazy thoughts uh, thinking that anything is possible also mm. wanting to try a lot more things than you ever would so i think it was an amalgamation of all of this coming together with a bunch of frustration to sort of make the most of what happens outside a classroom mm. so that's when we started representing um our dream and mm. called it under uh, 25 when we said what what's going to happen for kids and students who who are in schools and colleges today yeah. uh who want to do things outside of science commerce and arts um and arts in india is 
it's mm. humanity it's mm. not hearts so i think the the idea was to sort of highlight everything outside yeah. of the three main streams of education that india provides mm. so under 25 today is a, a media and entertainment company also a live company also mm. a tech company so yeah. we we say we are a, we are a universe mm. that's building products and building experiences and making impressions and I- interactions on the internet for a young person to express themselves freely and that's what we do You know I I since I met you some time back it was yeah. a couple of months ago and I I'm, and I, and as you were, you were kind of running me by the stuff that you guys are doing what I found really exciting was that you know you traditionally have um everybody want to reach out to the youth and that is uh, in in courts um and in many cases that ends up being cliche things which you would associate youth culture by um and then you have terms like millennials and gen z and you told me gen alpha was the next one uh i, I think so was yeah. it or is it gen alpha no someone told me gen alpha we were talking about perennials we were talking about perennials yeah, correct yeah. that's we'll what we'll get there yeah um and and what i found interesting was that the the way you guys have built this is from a point of understanding um of the reality of what you really want yeah. um because that's when it kind of came out um but what i think is interesting is also how you kind of evolved it as it gone as it's gone along um so if you look at year 1 versus now what's really changed uh, yeah this this is actually amazing uh one of the first things that anto and i discussed when we were putting the under 25 summit together mm. the the youth festival that we do every year it's mm. been 7 years mm. since we've been doing it the one of the things that we said was if we wouldn't watch this on stage yeah. we will not put this on stage mm. because if we are a direct representation of this organize if of this community yeah if we don't enjoy it then we don't want to do it yeah and i think that that became very very important to the genesis of what under 25 was doing since we were representing an audience mm. we knew what they wanted and like like we always discuss youngsters are the biggest bullshit detectors <laughs> uh they truly are they'll know they'll know it when they see it and you know that you don't want to give them something that you won't consume yourself yeah and in that and in that situation true community building happened yeah and that's what we ended up building and over year 1 year 2 and as it grew the community started telling us what they wanted as well so it became a two way interaction and because that's where community really was yeah. and they'd say things like okay hey you don't have anything in i don't know filmmaking can mm. you add something there yeah. and then slowly and steadily it became a larger conversation mm. and i think i'm sure anto has more to add in this but yeah that i think community building truly happened in a very organic format yeah. where we where we listened to them it was full of respect so i think that's where it was uh shall i uh, quickly add my two bits to Please that do. right Please. so i think what really excited us from year 1 to year 7 and i think we're sitting um on the 7th year of under 25 summit that we just launched yeah what's really st- strange and exciting was the fact that we uh, when we started we were 18 years old mm. we were sitting in college mm. um and the idea behind what we wanted to do was also very time consuming and not something that every parent or a teacher would be okay with while you're still in college right yeah, yeah. so we come from middle class families and and both of our parents were really looking forward to us picking up jobs and mm-hmm. internships and what not and then there's this curve ball that we're throwing yeah. saying what that were we all studying by the way i did bcom honors huh? shayans did bba okay Um, and we were both in Christ, so we were in Christ for f- I was in Christ for five years with Anto, uh-huh. while Anto was in Christ for ever and ever. <laughs> yeah, I think eighteen uh, years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> all my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically, um, um, so I come from middle class Malayali family, and for us, it's very important. It's like the only thing my mom would want me to do mm-hmm. uh, is get a job at Infosys. Like if I don't get that job, then <laughs> then there's something terribly wrong with me, right? And both of us did well in college for us to land the jobs that we would need. So. so mm-hmm. technically it wasn't one of those things where we we would be like oh i'm not getting anything hence i would start a company both yeah, of us were yeah. really doing uh fine to sort of have picked up a job mm-hmm. uh but what i'm getting to is that year when we first did it mm-hmm. um both chance and i looked at each other and there was this really dear moment where we said uh, you know let's let's go out there and get as many people as possible to attend the festival mm-hmm. And you won't believe this, Varun. What really happened was uh, we had two people buy tickets to the Under Twenty Five Summit in our first year. Mm-hmm. And two people. Two people. Okay. The first person was my mom. Oh. <laughs> the second one was Shyam's mom. <laughs> 
Mums, na. Yeah, mums. <laughs> That's a, that's such sweet art. I mean, I, I must say that I must confess on this podcast that I'm the biggest fan of my parents and and they're truly rock stars for what they've you know sort of been through to allow us to do what we are doing today. Um, I think we don't appreciate them enough. But what what really happened for us in that first year, though we had only two people buy the tickets. You won't believe it. Like the first few days of planning the summit, mm-hmm. we were still writing an email to Barack Obama. Hmm. That's the thing about youngsters. We are irrational optimists, right? Yeah. We think anything is possible. It's it's not like he and I had any idea of what it looked like to do something like yeah. this. It's not that we've done festivals before. It's not that we knew what content really means or how to curate a festival or what does an experience stand for. Mm-hmm. Nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Here comes two really young, passionate kids who want to do something for the community that they are a part of, which mm-hmm. is young people. Yeah. I said if not for under 25 which other company in this country is selling is 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 doing something for the youth and not selling a product yeah right and for us that was important for us yeah. community first and then product right yeah. so we went after the community and uh, then what happened was 5 uh, years later 6 years later to be very honest uh, we got jaded um, mm-hmm. and i have to be very honest about this fact because uh with experience i always tell this and this is this is a hardcore truth bomb i don't mm. know how people are going to take this but <laughs> i say experience jades people uh, of course it does uh and i say this because I, i second your opinion yes and and i'd love to hear your perspective after this because <laughs> you've been through 10 years of this and uh so for us in our 6th year i looked at shyans and i said what the hell has happened to us we are we are now a team of 15 people at the time mm. uh, we have we have a great you know sort of festival where 15000 people buy tickets and come yeah. Yeah. it's a great experience but what happened to us why are we so jaded why are we not innovating why are we not thinking out of the box we're doing the same goddamn thing blasting it year yeah. after year yeah. where's the real challenge yeah. that we're taking up to represent the most erratic fun crazy strange uh, you know uh, insane generation that's ever been uh, you know we've been privy to in this in this living waking yeah. life yeah and here we are what are we doing for them i said yeah. we're not building a community we're not building a brand we're building a generation yeah. so let's take that gear forward yeah. and and last year we put out an open letter to Obama hmm. it was called Dear Obama hmm. uh it was not just a, a open letter from Shyans and Anto it was from the youth of India hmm. and we put this uh, beautiful video out hmm. and uh, to our surprise it really got the steam that it had to get hmm. and i think a week two weeks later we got a reply from his team saying that Anto and Shyans we have tears in our eyes watching this video and so young cool. india needs more leaders like you guys and we said that's it this is what we were supposed to do <laughs> this is what it always meant right and i th- i always tell young people please don't get jaded by experience because once you know more about something you feel like it's impossible to do do it yeah um but that's the real power of a young person to just be uh, as 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 positive as uh, optimistic as possible because mm. our generation has the access to the internet and anything yeah. really can be possible Yeah and and I sorry just want to add to that and I think it had so much to do with the kind of people that we were Varun hmm. so when we started this 7 years ago we I mean there are some things which are fundamentally inherent in terms of characteristics of the both of us hmm. we are irrational Optimist. optimists ourselves hmm. we are extremely positive people hmm. we know that we are always thinking about how we're going to solve a problem yeah. versus sitting on a problem and thinking about how we need to brood about it and yeah. like take that circle go move forward yeah we've always been in that zone and mm. i think that that was so important to reiterate to the audience mm. and we kept doing that again and again and again and just reinstating the fact that yes that adventure that irrational optimism is what takes us forward as a community yeah. as a generation yeah. let's all do it yeah. why are just anto and shreyans doing it let yeah. the community do it let the world do it and that's how under 25 just mm. you know sort of snowballs into bigger things you know when you when you talked about jaded right uh, the whole, so Ha- will there be moments in feel jaded of course you will you you are calling other people youngsters and you are about 25 yes <laughs> i am 37 so you can only imagine uh, where that uh, conversation is uh, but it's it's about i mean at some level um, you can't keep doing the same thing year on year you will get jaded yeah. right um, the idea is always so we have this thing in office and i think miro at puja all three of us say this um, is the fact that we need to keep grooming people to take our jobs um and that's the only way so every year we try and figure out uh what we can what we need to try and do like i i keep like they, they have this thing that then varun 
keeps looking for things to do um, because he keeps giving like you know handing over stuff to people and then working with them on it but at some point that reduces the amount i have to do yes. and i'm more constantly trying to find something so um and i feel that's what keeps me fresh uh, what keeps what keeps me fresh is that every 3 to 6 months there is always something more beyond what i was doing right now that i'm that I'm involved in um same goes for over same goes for puja and any time when that gets stagnant is when we all start getting a little jaded and uh, i think it's also important to kind of empower the people you added it uh, you know handed that over to to be able to take those calls right and yeah. and kind of back them up when they make mistakes and that's really the whole thing i mean that that's the only way you're going to be able to do it you're going to make mistakes but it's fine we've all made mistakes yeah. um yeah. and yeah so that, that's that's the whole thing and the optimism thing is actually the most interesting part right there was a period of time when making a mistake was a no go in any organization yeah. um thank god a term called beta testing came up right yeah. um, and now we're all in that mode right and we're all really trying to figure out um, unless you keep trying those things out you will um, never know Like how many things have you guys sold which you didn't know how to do, but you said we'll do it. We, uh, every <laughs> single thing, like, <laughs> everything, like a hundred and eighty percent of what we do is that. <laughs> Me and Rohit have this weird story about once how he pitched a three D AV to right. a three D sales AV to a client, uh, where people could wear three D glasses and watch an AV, and he came out and told us like, you, "Do you know how to make this?" And he's like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> I just sold it. Now we'll go work yeah. backwards." Yeah, ten, it, and it was it for ten, fifteen day delivery. So I think there were a bunch of people on a lot of Red Bull working on it. Yes, but we figured it out. I mean, we we it was uh, Chota Chetan three D, which is, I think Chota Chetan is before your time. Yes, uh, um, which is why I laugh. I'm like, holy shit, what is this? <laughs> Chota Chetan was India's first three D movie. Damn, <laughs> no, no clue. wait, Chota Beam. No, no, I mean, no, no, sorry, uh, Chota Chetan, Kutte Chetan. हाँ करेक्ट छोटे चातन इज द मलयालम फिल्म विच इज द फर्स्ट एवर थ्री डी फिल्म करेक्ट एंड दैट बिकेम छोटी फेयर इनफ सो से Yeah, you're not yeah. that young also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not that young. <laughs> I've, 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 uh, I've, I've, I've seen that movie, and I think it was the best 3D movie that I've ever seen. Because actually, like, there, there used to be one like thing that'll fly across my yeah, eyes and yeah, shit. It was, yeah. it was too fun. It is also what like also those that blue and red glasses which you traditionally yeah. get oh. were so interesting because you'd always want to take them home because you yeah. could take them home at that point of time. It's a great collection. Yeah. Uh, have you seen Super Deluxe? Of course, you've seen. I've seen. Yeah. Super Deluxe has that usage of these yeah. glasses. Oof. Super Deluxe is a. Yeah. Anyway. You guys have seen Super Deluxe. Watch Please it. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> Plug in Netflix. Go watch. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have you guys also kind of like over seven years? How have you seen uh, the audience kind of evolve as well, right? Because I'm I'm guessing initially, because when I was younger, like it was either commerce and uh, you know science. science, and so I did science. Nice. I did my engineering in Bangalore, Pesit. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Namma Uru Bengaluru. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was in I was in school in Bangalore. I was like I did my eleventh and twelfth there in Cottons, and nice. then I then I went You're to. You're a Cottonian. I'm a Cottonian. Yeah, Cottonian I mean, plus engineering at Pesit in Bangalore. Management quota. Mm. Man, that's it. <laughs> I my my parents are if, when they're listening, I have to put that out there. I was not a merit <laughs> student. I was a terrible terrible. So I so this is what my issue was with education, right? And I, oh, one more engineering bashing is going to happen. They're like people in this room hear me bashing engineering so much, it's going to yeah. become a thing. Um. I was really good at coding. Nice. I I had never gotten below ninety nine out of hundred in coding ever. But to get an engineering, you need to know physics, you need to know chemistry, and you need to know math. I'm terrible at all three. Right. Ah, uh, so yeah, somehow got in, but I got in mechanical engineering. Nice. And so, did you? You didn't code then. Where am I coding in mechanics? I was in doing lathe machines and like foundry yeah. and stuff like that. So love for coding died. So are you coding now? Back at it? No, I I tried getting back to it for once in a while. I tried I I tried doing some of the the Swift courses on on the iPad and stuff like that, but yeah. haven't like I haven't had the level of. Focus I used to right on this. But front. you were really passionate about it. I still love doing it. I know I still still love fucking around with it, right? So what I would do is that I would like if someone said make a basic like a very base level C plus plus program um, about the weather. Where mm-hmm. You you know in, in school you have this press one and you get temperature. Press two you get what the weather is like yes. and stuff like that. If we would just quote that, I would have like a, a small buffering ad that would come before the the thing came nice. in. You were selling ads from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always <laughs> always. <selling. laughs> I love doing that part. Yes. Yeah, and 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 I remember that time we when we started, at least most people didn't know what we were doing. Right. But what's been interesting is that over the last couple of years, I've even a lot of people kind of approach and go and say, "My son or my daughter wants to work in the creative space. Sure. You, you're one of the only people we know who's done something in this. Um, can you have a conversation with them? Right. I've seen yeah. that come from a parent side because that's my generation. We're all yeah. parents now, <laughs> and people are kind of turning and going, "I didn't get to do this. You did this. Um, my son or daughter wants to do this, and and and." 
can you have can you them, guide them come in intern can you can you guide them and stuff like that um and we've had like like we have this boy come in intern and he you know works at glitch and um and stuff like that happened so did you all see that shift i mean i just, i know 7 years is still much shorter than what i'm talking about but uh, has there been an evolution of what your your actual audience is kind of uh, thinking about and asking for so i think as for what we've been trying to do uh, over the last 7 years we've seen a lot of changes for sure um one thing that i can i can speak with a lot of conviction and honesty is the fact that um, our audience or anyone who's young is constantly changing mm-hmm. on a day to day basis mm-hmm. and the change is uh, not because of anything else it's for the first time this generation has access to so much information and uh, our way of processing that information is still archaic yeah right it's because we don't know how to it's i always say this like if somebody was playing tv in front of me and changed channels every 30 seconds and i was watching 50 different channels at the same time mm. how would i process that information yeah that is technically instagram today yeah right that's how much information yeah. is happening in yeah. split seconds yeah. with multiple artists and creators and doers me as a consumer is consuming this yeah. we're also a reactive generation right and i don't blame my generation for it it's all, almost become the way of life because how that, that's how we always saw things um, yeah right? that's the only way we've seen it so it's like back in the day my mom and dad would say that that, that the tv was the idiot box and mm. and today the tv is not even in contention like tv <laughs> yeah. lost the battle yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. you know um so i would say uh what's very different is every day is changing every day is new every day the content consumption versus the content creation is new mm-hmm. so even the perspectives are changing rapidly yeah so i can never put my finger on it and say we've understood the pulse of the audience i can always put a finger and say we are here and changing as fast as the generation is changing mm. right because that's the challenge that we yeah. have to keep so hence we i would say our job is very exciting because mm. it's no two days can be the same because the the people that we represent and work for and mm. work towards mm. is changing every day yeah so in the last 7 years some of the most iconic moments have been when we've completely reimagined everything that we've learned mm. so if i say hey last year this worked and we'd never do something yeah. exactly like last year the next year for sure like that's been the uh, uh, the ultimate rule at 125 mm. is for the team today the team is about 35 people working full time across two offices mm. and i've seen the the kind of energy that we have in the office yeah. it's it's to constantly innovate yeah. it's to constantly try new things and use new platforms i would not say tiktok is a bad bad platform it It's only a matter of time till TikTok. It's a TikToks. fantastic platform. Yeah. It is only a matter of time. I have never seen more innovative tools, tools on a platform exactly. for creation, right? Like every day, I have gone onto it and said, "Okay, I still haven't made one video." Right? I'm like, yeah. I'm so tempted to shall, try. Shall we inaugurate it today? Like, I'll, 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 I'll make sure that happens. Okay, you, you teach me how to do this. Yeah, put one, <laughs> we'll put one first TikTok yeah. video. We'll go up. <laughs> Here we go. Advertising uh, is is only beginning. <laughs> It's not dead, guys. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. No. And also, just to sort of add to that, I think the thought was, like how they say, you are essentially the sum of your experiences, right? Yeah. The experiences now hmm. are hyper. Yeah. In the sense of how quickly an experience can be consumed yeah. in a lot of different ways. I'm not just talking about like an offline experience. Yeah. Just the sheer amount of access and the digital experience that people have. Yeah. makes them uh, make choices mm-hmm. and your perception and your perspectives are changing that quickly yeah and what has happened with us and to more specifically answer that question which is over a period of time mm. how much has this generation changed yeah is you can directly correlate that to how much has this landscape changed mm. over the last 7 years yeah. how much more access how much more digital consumption has increased yeah. and while watching that when you see that as an outsider yeah. you're like shit this is changing and this is changing how yeah. and you got to keep up with that and i think that the good part about us was we we were always trying to be as ourselves as authentically ourselves as we could yeah. uh, very unapolog- unapologetically mm. and we're like look man like this is who we are yeah. this is the community re- that we represent yeah. we'd love to like do this with you guys yeah. and do this journey together yeah why don't you tell us what yeah. you want yeah. and let's make that happen together yeah. and i think that that like just brutal honesty mm. with everything even the even the thing that my anto mentioned about the barack obama video yeah just an interesting story there was we put that out we it did as it did and it traveled and uh, it was it was amazing to see how the world like how india came together how the youth came together to make that happen yeah uh, at the end of this because we truly believe that what we were trying to do needed to be told uh, at the festival as well yeah 
we actually printed out an entire flex banner at the under 25 summit la, the, earlier this year we actually explained what happened hmm. for the barack obama campaign we haven't the, he, he isn't here yet hmm. he isn't going to come he hasn't come yet yeah. but that does not mean he's not going to because when he does it'll probably be because of under 25 yeah but you need to know that that's the level of optimism that we are coming from yeah. and that's what we're trying to do together but we needed our community to know that yeah. and we told them that like it is and i think that that's what changed over a period of time get honest with them and like you know people grow and they'll grow together you guys use a large amount of data um and that's uh, something which, which which i remember our chat before uh, uh, this was that uh, the way you looked at data from your consu- uh, do i call them consumers do i call them what what do you guys call them you can call them community members you can community call them youngsters members. uh youngsters no i'm not calling them youngsters <laughs> at all uh from a community member sounds yeah. somewhat more fun yeah. uh from your uh fine youngsters from, <laughs> from uh so when you look at that data right and, and what are the pieces that have surprised you because i remember the fact that you guys had sadguru last this year uh was something i would have never thought like i would have never thought spirituality uh would be a thing because um i have actually said this example a couple of times on this podcast is that i was once in a in a in a brand uh, session where one of these uh, consultants kind of turned around and said the youth today don't want to have real experiences because they're always looking at their phones and i said i could not disagree more um and i had a long argument with that person um in your minds do youth want to have actual experiences or they want to only want to look at their phones let's get I, i'll ask you all cuz you'll have more relevant understanding of it's a beautiful question it's a beautiful question because uh, and i'm and i'm and i'm so uh, happy that i get to answer this question <laughs> is because it's because <laughs> this is what we've done for the last uh, few years is because we've realized that real experiences are 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 irreplaceable like you can never take that away uh from any human being who is who is in this world because that's truly when you start emoting feeling creating uh also exercising some of the best skills that you have as a human being mm. because at 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 right in front of a phone you're just you're just being a, a version of yourself yeah. uh which is a persona that you've built for your online digital personality that you've created yeah but offline you're stripped off all of that right a real experience is going to bring you to the truth of who you are and and i think that's the power of a real experience so mm-hmm. we we put the hard, hardest bullet first and come on think about it right uh but on 7 years back right out of college two kids are think of building a festival when the top 5 festivals in the country have not made money for the past 5 years yeah. at the time yeah right ticket bu- india is not a ticket buying market we cannot program the biggest artists here and sell more than 50000 tickets but does, because we're not ready as a country no. for entertainment at that scale where we'll pay that kind of ticket money to enter a concert and we also a like free stuff let's and be honest we love yeah. free and i'm i'm, I'm so like, long back when i worked in a call center you know what i had an indian customer <laughs> I, I I I I spoke to america uh, american consumers primarily mm-hmm. but whenever an indian american Right. Uh, called me f- to cancel. Right. I would give them a free month, and they would not cancel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indians That's love free stuff. Enough. Indians love free stuff, and 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 not to deny the fact that the first entire event that we did, we made it free because yeah. that's the only way we would have had people. Yeah. And Apart from the two tickets that were our bonds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that also we refunded. You know? <laughs> um, so. After all of this we've come to realize that the hardest bullet was to fight real experiences because the whole wave was going on the internet we could have peacefully been a great content company which created videos on a day to day basis and sustained for the last 7 years yeah. but i don't think we would have seen half the amount of impact that we would have seen on ground and and seen the number of sp- smiles and number of people who've actually come and told us that their lives have been impacted because of the mm. experiences that we've created yeah and for us it was never about online offline digital creation festival experience tech data for us it was very very simple for said if we have to ever be in conversation with a youngster mm-hmm. and get them to listen to us so what are we in the in the in the category of we are in the category of acquiring maximum attention of a young person mm-hmm. right in that category we do anything that yeah. catches their attention right and retain that attention for as as long as possible so if you'd look at the festival what we've cracked is a person walks in at 9am on a saturday mm-hmm. then has 
uh, a festival that's happening till 9 pm in the night with mm. music design tech food culture panels workshops name it everything in one place is a multi genre multi day festival yeah. but people are coming as absolutely confused people so what what yeah. do we tell them yeah. if we are here to celebrate confusion because confusion is a good thing it's a great thing it's yeah. the best thing that our generation has yeah. is the opportunity to try 100 things tell me once before in your life that you could go up to your parents and ask what they what did they want to be in life they would look at us and be like i just wanted to give us security as a family i just wanted us to survive yeah And today we have a generation who wants to live life the so way. So I call my want. mother a millennial because she, because she's like that. Like she will try to always want to have newer things to do and stuff like that. I've always yes. said she's a she just was a millennial who was born too early. Right. And yeah, millennializing I mean, it, right? Like that's what's important. And the the part about even say Sadguru being yeah. on stage, yeah. the place where it comes from yeah. is the fact that. It's not that youngsters are not interested in that topic. Yeah. It's just never been explained in their language. How yeah. do you millennialize spirituality? Yeah. That's the real question to answer, right? Yeah. How did we get uh, Sadhguru on stage? <laughs> yeah. We did it in a way where we got three of the biggest YouTubers yeah. in the country to be on stage with him yeah. and have a conversation where questions that we would really have. So, Sadhguru, what do you think about love? Hmm. That's that's a question that I'd like to listen to an answer from from him. Hmm. But the question is directed towards somebody who's young yeah. and would actually understand yeah. in that sort of scale. Yeah. The idea was to millennialize it yeah. and not just spirituality. It's pretty much picking up every single topic. that people want more clarity about but yeah. do it in their language yeah. and as soon as you do it in their language the ball completely like the game changes there there were a lot of people last year the reason why we got him also was because there were, there was a lot of curiosity around the topic hmm. what about spirituality was interesting people around yeah. that and what we ended up doing was to find a way where this could be more would be more consumable yeah. and that's that's sort of what happened and millennializing it just millennialize everything and then it'll work So how do you arrive on this piece? So for how did the whole like I'm, I'm picking on the spirituality one because that's in, that's an interesting one. How do you all come down to say okay, this is a point of conversation um, that we should really focus on? So I mean, till now the the approach was not defined, but mm. great time for us to answer this question. Mm. Till last year, we used to do things that we really wanted to hear. It was as simple as that. Mm. But there is some science to that right now. Yeah. Um, over the last one year we've scaled up the entire vertical of live experiences to 103 festivals mm. that's the highest uh, number of festivals that we've done in a year from like 10 festivals last year to 103 across 44 cities yeah but what really you know got us thinking was how do we sort of maintain the quality of every talk or a session or a panel or mm. a workshop that happens mm. on stage yeah and how do we merge that with real quality entertainment where you feel a full fledged 360 edutainment experience mm. and that's what we were going after so this year um, i said for the last 6 years we've gone out there and we've done festivals year after year wanting to highlight a few topics and do a few things and get people to listen to it yeah but i i feel like we've done complete disservice and disservice to the potential we've had as a festival or a community to use the power of the world's youngest population towards something much more than just listening yeah which is great listening is a great uh, uh, skill to have but it was time it was time to sort of take that leap seventh year in this festival we we have 10 pillars mm. that we're going after mm. the theme of the festival the overarching th- theme is celebrate confusion mm. the sub theme is to take your stand mm. right and within the sub theme we have 10 things that you can take your stand towards or mm. for or with so there stand for love stand for equality stand for wellness stand for creation mm. stand to collaborate mm. right like this there are 10 different things mm. yeah and every single talk or a panel or a workshop or a session or a performance mm. is related to one of these topics yeah right and then what we're doing is we're giving people three options of organizations or activities that they can be a part of yeah once they want to stand with love or stand for equality or mm. stand for the environment yeah now you don't just listen to what's happening on stage you can also go act yeah. and commit your one hour for the next one year mm. every single week once uh, w- once a week for you to go and c- contribute to what we've been talking about as a festival yeah. so i think finally we've moved from just talking to actually start acting yeah. to then eventually then put out that report which says this yeah. is what young india is we're going out then creating this kind of a change yeah and it was a full this- circle it was a full circle because <coughs> if you start with telling people educating them about say different creative careers yeah. the big situation was not that 
uh, I want to be I am an engineer but I want to become a musician mm-hmm. do people know enough about being in the business of music mm-hmm. our ideology was that we need to do festivals or we need to be in spaces where we can educate people about this specific space and just like that uh, exponent that into multiple different genres and yeah. that's what we were trying to do but what happened eventually was there is education mm. people understand that the business of music or the business of x y or z is going to be very interesting yeah. but how do now people take the next step yeah. because people would finish and they be like shreyans like i'm so inspired we had such a good time at the festival we did all of the things that we did now what next mm. and that next was what we were trying to answer and over a period of time and i think that we've we're getting closer and closer to that yeah. that's what's exciting currently and it is coming the full circle when it comes a full circle like anders said that's the only way i think this will be more impact driven mm. apart from just the education of it and that's what's exciting okay. um i know uh I have a bunch of stuff to ask you, but I, but I should have actually gone for a break at least a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so I'll go in for one, and we'll be right back with Advertising is Dead. Hey everybody, welcome to another amazing week on the IVM Podcast Network. You know what? Not just an amazing week. This is going to be an amazing year. We're looking forward to all the stuff that we're going to bring you in 2020. Please remember to fill out our survey, ivmpodcast.com/survey. That's going to really help us know what you guys want from us from 2020 as well, right? I mean, like we'd really like to hear from you, so please do fill out that survey. It would be very helpful. Also, would like to thank our sponsors on the network this week. We have Intel, Cambly, and Storytel. Also, if you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's a week of milestones. We have a couple of milestones this week. Geek Fruit released the 300th episode this week. What a journey it's been! Join Tejas and Vinkar as they celebrate this milestone by talking about HBO's new hit show, Watchmen. Actually, surprisingly, at this point, Geek Fruit is the second oldest show on our network, so it's definitely a show if you haven't checked out, please do check out. Another milestone that we have is it's the 50th episode of our Kannada show, Thale Harate. So definitely do check that stuff out. And as for the rest of our regular programming on Cyrus says this week Cyrus talks to actor Neil Bopalam on IVM likes of Basil Lekarutka and Madhuri give their weekly recommendations, discuss their favorite short stories and talk about our new storytelling show Tapri Tales. On Golgappa Trupti is joined by Nikhil Mahajan, a director who carved a niche in the industry through his film Pune 52. He elaborates on the craft of storytelling and what goes into making films for a living. On GBCD, Farhad and Sunetra talk about their experiences of having lived in different cities. They share how different cities have had an impact on their queer identity. On Lit Nama, Lakshmi talks to Sonia Thomas about her work at BuzzFeed, the meme culture, internet as a space for women, TikTok videos, and digital literary trends. On Tapri Tales, Madhuri tells the story of a mother who tries to understand YouTube trends and garners a dream of having her own YouTube channel. And with that, let's get on with your show. Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. Um, I'm still with Shreyans <laughs> and Anto. I've uh, thanks for getting that right. Don't right. Dongrila. <laughs> Dongrila. I was once called uh, by a, by a very beautiful uh, Vodafone call center person. I was called Mr. Dongrila. Yes. I think uh, that sounds quite cool, actually. Yeah, it's actually a cooler surname. <laughs> why, why wouldn't you want to be a Varun Dongrila? Dongrila. Yes. Yeah. I've been called Dugri Wala, Dongrila, <laughs> Dugri Wala, Dugri Wala. <laughs> See, I hear you because the number of times my name gets mispronounced in a day yeah. is uh, it's it's insane. But it's also tricky, you know, because you used to Shreyas. Yeah. Yes, and but you, you just I, unfortunately like, I'm not. Imagine, <laughs> imagine, <laughs> stress imagine someone calling him Sharians. Sharians. I yeah. have heard. You were called Sharians. I've yeah. I've been I've been told. Has somebody somebody actually didn't What even put effort. What is Sharians? That's Sh- not even like somebody didn't even put effort. They uh, they literally wrote an email. Email was to S H R E Y A N S at the rate or whatever, and uh, you've you've written the email address, mm. and in the hey they've written hey Shreya. Shreya. <laughs> I was like, wow, you, you, like you messed up everything with Bro, that. That you got. Maybe you thought like see, middle name, like I, and, like Shrey, like you saw Shreya, Shreya, and it's yes. Oh, Mike, I was just gonna say yeah, it, man. man. <laughs> Sorry, I, I beat you to it. Yeah. I beat you to it. Damn it! <laughs> Fastest finger first. Because uh, did you all also have to put your you put put your initials before your names when you were in school and this thing? Always yeah, no, 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 no. I gave mine was Anto Philip. Yeah, mine man. was always D Varun. I was never oh, Varun Gogira. Oh, I was always D. Like there was a D. There was a D. D. I was I was Shreyans Jain, but like nobody ever got it right. So yeah. after a point, I just gave up, yeah. and I was like, "Okay, you want to call me Shreyas? It's fine, but yeah. like someday when yeah. you know me well enough, yeah. I hope that you pronounce my name right, yeah. as Shreyans. It's yeah. and it's and the problem is not Shreyans also, mm. right? It's not with the H. Mm. It's just Shreyans. Welcome, Welcome to the dance with Shreyans Jain. <laughs> This is yet another episode of <laughs> million people mispronouncing <laughs> his name. Oh yes. my god! But what helped was the fact that because I would say D Varun, people started just calling me D. 
Yeah. That became a pet name for a while. That's a great pet name. Yeah. Yeah. It's a I good mean, one like to it, say. It really it works well on a date and yeah. stuff. Yes. D. D. Yes. It's simpler than saying. Yeah. Like, hey, D. What's up? What's up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone rogue after this break. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> but, uh, how has it been working with brands, right? Because you guys have a couple of clear rules, which which is the fact that a um, not just because of regulation, but you generally don't work with alcohol brands. Yes. Yep. Um, you also had for a period the fact that people of over twenty five couldn't come, but eventually made them guess. No, uh, uh, there's a very interesting story to that. We'll tell. I will. You. I will let you all tell me that story. But yeah. uh, actually, let's do that story first, and yes. we'll come back to working with brands. Yes. What so, is the story behind that? So the story is, guys, drum rolls. <laughs> 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 Under 25 is not the age. It's, it's the, the emotion. emotion man. <laughs> <It's> the emotion. <laughs> so, um, I think for us, um, under 25 can never exist and truly flourish without people over the age of 25. And not because of the age or the number. Mm. It's primarily because it's it's multiple generations coming in in conjunction towards creating and collaborating towards what we want to achieve and it can be anything right yeah. i'm just giving a very overarching dream yeah. however the big dream is without parents coming on board with the ideology of what under 25 is doing and what under 25 sort of accepting the might and the power and the glory of what the previous generations have gone through and sort of really learn from them for the ways that they've done what they've done yeah. uh, is very important mm-hmm. uh, we don't are we a brand that discourages uh, anybody over the age of 25 and say that hey you are not welcome never because mm. we're a very inclusive brand we want everybody to be a part of under 25 mm. however it's not something um, that uh, you know we want to truly uh, say in terms of that's our audience i wouldn't say everybody is our audience mm. uh, young people are our audience and everybody will okay, young are your audience yes and ev- <laughs> and the whole emotion part that we're going after is for everybody uh, who is uh, who wants to feel young? Mm. Who wants to be in that in that energy uh, mm. uh, ecosystem? And also, parents who are truly associated with a young person mm. need to be a part of our community. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense because also the speakers that we put on stage aren't people under the age of twenty five per se, mm. but they're people who are relevant to the young people whose mm. voice and whose uh, dreams and and choices that they've made have been really inspirational to an audience this young. Mm. So that's how we curate. Can I put someone random on stage? I cannot I can only put somebody Who has some kind of relevance To the young person Which means You get called out for it anyways Yes So that's why We are a brand Which truly stands for people Under the age of Mm. 25 We Mm. represent that ideology Mm. But we're also that brand That builds a bridge Between generations Mm. Because we want to talk To parents equally So today perennials As a concept Parents who think like millennials Are is a is an IP that we're working on for other parents mm. who want to know more about parenting, to know more about the youth, but from the voice of a perennial, not Antoine Shans. Because mm. if we go and start speaking, parents are going to be like, dude, what the hell? Mm. I've lived like this life and I know what you guys mm. are doing. But we're, we're saying, no, there's something a little more, uh, you know, uh, something that needs a little more clarity. Is the language that the two generations are speaking in are two different languages. Yeah. How can we make that the same language? And I think that's the day we'd be really uh, out there killing it because mm-hmm. we'd impact two different sides uh, of a generation yeah. and through like maximum, maximum impact levels. And yeah. I think that's what's exciting. Yeah. And I think overall, because you mentioned perennials and that, that was a conversation that yeah. we were having yeah. the last time as well. There is there is so much interest because it goes back to the earlier part of this conversation, which was uh, it's been seven years since we've been doing this. Things have so drastically changed, yeah. and like the audience is constantly evolving. The audience is not just evolving in terms of content consumption. Yeah, the audience is evolving in terms of their relationships with their parents, yeah. their relationships, their the culture overall. Yeah, the number of things that are now accepted versus what they were seven years ago, or like. Ages ago, right? Yeah, yeah, it's changing continuously, and it's changing in every side. So the idea was, and I realized this with my parents, right? I'm Marwadi. Yeah. Now, um, as as Anto had the Infosys uh, situation mm-hmm. going on at home, uh, my situation at home is just essentially two questions. We've got to anybody who is listening to your podcast right now, Varun, and is Marwadi will relate to me on like a whole new spiritual level, <laughs> which is one is, "Beta, tum shadi kab kar rahe ho? Your age is not important. Hmm. Uh, regardless of your age, that question is going to be relevant. Hmm. And the other one is, Beta, tum ka business kab join kar rahe ho? Correct. Now, these are two questions that will be asked to you regardless. Now, what happens in a situation like that is, 
they needed to be educated yeah uh, not educated in the way that they were wrong mm. but more like in this present generation this is what's happening this is what is exciting us you need to be on this journey with me so personally we face those obstacles mm. right and i think that that personal facing that obstacle personally was amazing yeah. because that's now just like extended over to the entire community mm. and over a period of time the closer we get our own parents to become perennials ah. that is the journey that takes us like moving forward like yeah. we truly win when our parents also become as perennial friendly or perennial themselves yeah. uh, and we're closer to achieving that i think that's what's keeping us going correct <laughs> i was i was trying to think of what um, my categorization would be So I'm I'm technically an elder millennial, yeah. <laughs> because I'm on that I'm I'm 82 born. So I'm yeah. I think I'm on the line yeah. somewhere yeah. there. But uh, no, you're just you're just being like like you're 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 just being kind and being like yeah I'm I'm an elder millennial actually. Please uh, please consider me. <laughs> I don't want to be yeah. a cusp. That yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. cusp the cusp is a tricky place. It's a weird <laughs> space. I'm like I just crossed the border. Yeah. Um, and I have a. Two and a half, yes. almost year old. You'd be a uh, kick-ass dad, won't you? Like, w- would you be like, what, 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 what do you as a parent? Actually, let's do this. What do you as a parent? What am I like as a parent? So, so this is the interesting part, right? Um, when we were going to have Leia, um, Pooja had a lot of these um things she could read about. Um, there because there's so much out there for mothers. Yes, there is nothing out there for fathers. nothing absolutely like, nothing nothing i eventually like a month ago found something which is a publication um like there were multiple apps or multiple videos you could actually learn from and all that stuff for for mothers nothing for dads there was one funny app i found on the iphone which you literally throw a tip at you every day and it's like be nice to your wife her feet will be hurting like it was stuff like that like there was, there was nothing of actual relevance right um and i think it also goes back to the fact that it was never really something men would do um while there have been exceptions across the board men were not overtly involved in bringing up the kid in in at like a very hardcore level right, right. um like i have so we have also have two dogs so i am a very open ended shit picker like i have like i have zero filter you've on that anymore you've become a pro at it i can pick it up like uh, at, <laughs> at the sake sleep. of making people sound like get like buffy about it i don't care like, like with tissues not around i could pick it up with my hand yeah. it's my kids poop for like when it come on i can do that um but it's so it's that so uh, for me it was always the fact that yeah i need I, i need to make sure that it it wasn't as much effort on pooja's part um but i took the, i i decided to take on stuff which i knew would make her life simpler so that's how it started off so i've i've done nights for the last two years so now i i can actually go back to sleep in like half a second like i've i've learned that trick so two and a half years of of that um apart from that i mean it's just generally fun once a kid crosses six months to kind of when they build a person to actually uh, have a conversation with them um not try to say no for everything but try to explain while well, they will not understand half of it right still try right it's, it's fun to have that interaction i like to have conversations it's why i do this so i can try to do that with with her as well but it's interesting to see them evolve so that's what i do i mean i try to i'm also really like i do stupid things so she enjoys that i introduce her to snapchat filters and she that's like uh she loves <laughs> that um um she knows how to um nice. like i i kept pushing for the fact that she should use an ipad right um, i'm not an anti screen person right. i'm a regular screen person so i took my old ipad i took all the apps off got all kinds of uh, stuff on it so she's learned to use the apple pencil on an ipad and and for me that is eventually going to be a good thing because that's where she's eventually going to draw more yeah. although she has a paper and an easel and stuff yeah. which which rohit right. and and rakshita got her nice. um so that's i mean what, how do i define myself as a parent i i'm evolving with it uh, i would still say that uh that i you keep learning you can't say that i know how to be a parent you can't right um and like i don't know if i answered it would you would you have like preconceived notions about how to bring up a child because say I, i just think about me right like if i had to ever become a parent i'd be like okay this is how i'd want to raise my child because these are the things that i and this is also happening with all our parents as well because technically we are a source of um uh, uh, of their uh, a source of experimentation for their life not yeah. complete yeah. experimentation but to truly give us what they didn't get yeah right yeah. um and i think is that the going to be the future of parenting or or is it more on the choice of the of the kid um there are basic set of values right you want to give um right. i mean it's just like you know the fact that we teach her to say please um that she can't just and so 
uh, which becomes tricky when you try start trying to make her use Alexa. Oh, yeah. right. Wow. Uh, which is tricky because you don't have to say please. So yes. interesting, right? Um, so I, we refused to have Alexa for the longest time. I went for some um, conference and they gave it to me as one of those yeah. things oh, you yes, get when you get on stage. She's gotten that too. Yeah. Yes. Not free Alexa, <laughs> right? So I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> yes. I have to keep this at home now. So, yeah. um, and she can't say Alexa yet. So she says Alexa. Uh, she's gotten there, but I, my my thing is that she wants to say please now because she knows that that's what we've always pushed her towards that is rude to not say please right. um but would we be can she take a call as to so she now like for instance she she's very clear about what she wants to wear most times like she will say no these shoes right or or like or like no no not not this uh, t-shirt like and she, she has a point of view and she's what two and four months right, right. um so those are things we let her take a call so we we right. regulating that part of it um right. it's it's trickier when you have to do that um it's uh, also the fact sometimes she's like i don't want to sleep right, right. um uh, that's when you have to at some point i mean at some point you know that's where you say it's fine right at some point you can be slightly forceful parent and you right. say no you go to you're going to sleep so right. it's that balance right it shouldn't become like like no beating business no like sh- over shouting because anyway now yeah. you shout like it's like it's not really, i don't think it affects yeah i mean it 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 never did really but it's also the fear that was around it that made yeah. us feel yeah. like okay we're doing yeah. something for the sake yeah. of it but i think the the beauty of the future is the fact that people are coming out to be so much smarter and i always say this that we might be the smartest and the best generation yet that we might be the last ones to survive and uh every and and we might just kill everybody else let's make the most of it right no no so we no, that, that's not what i meant <laughs> the hell? let me just finish my statement let's make the most of it oh, that's how wrong guys that's the answer not not me okay uh um, no, just troubling i was just troubling uh, so basically i would say we are so good mm. that uh we we should avoid being the last generation that ever lived uh and that's yeah. because of the kind of uh, decisions that we make you've seen the kind of climate change situations that we are in the problems yeah. that we're facing it's obvious it's, it's around us we, yeah. can, we can't and we have to make that choice yeah. and i feel like if young people don't make that choice and and me included don't make the choices uh we have the potential of being the best generation yet and on the flip side we might just like uh you know or use the privilege that we have and mm. and sort of you know push it down the drain yeah. and i i don't think that's what what we should be doing and i think we as a generation are smarter than that mm. and i'm i'm sure the parents of of this generation yeah. which is now like people like us going into parenting in the next 5 to 10 years yeah. i think is going to be a great wave of of change yeah. and i'm just looking forward to see what that change might be nobody can predict it what's going to happen what's not going to happen but i feel like this is the time and place where we all have access to the same information mm-hmm. that the world has mm. also right? it's interesting right because over the last year both anto and i have both become uncles over this last mm. year and there is Be, with that experience there has been a lot that we've also learned which we've discussed yeah. which is i i have a nephew who is or he he's like a year and a half old and like now growing up to understand rational yeah. in some sense and he is always taught the same thing which is um if you when we ask him like if he cries when he wants something we're like what do you get when you cry and he says nothing mm. how will you get it and he shows love mm. so he has actions for both but it's a very very deep thought right yeah. it's it's ingrained into the fact that you don't get it if you if you're going to cry about it yeah. you're you need to you need to show love and yeah. like if you ask nicely you will get what yeah. you need but you need to be nice yeah it's these these are smaller experiences but so it's an interesting change right there was a period i think just read right from i would say my generation if i would call it that where it was parents were always hovering around to try and make sure that no no you can't do this you can't fall or all that stuff right um if leia falls we like it's fine get up so we know because the reaction comes because someone saying oh no you fell yeah. right unless, yeah. unless you got really hurt but but in most cases you don't you're, it's you're the a, embarrassment you of the fall yeah, yeah it's that and 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 the reaction you see around right uh, so it's it's also that is the fact that it, it, at some point you you are involved but we're also not so overtly involved where that you know she or he feels the need that okay that you know you guys are always around for like to tell me what to do i need to be independent like like leia loves to co- uh, like cook in her mind because she still hasn't like not actual cooking but so we got her this wooden uh, kitchen tensor, set yeah. uh, entire kitchen piece and she knows how to use that she opens the oven up she turns the dial she knows how to do all those things right and she she's actually doing it like with the right posture and we like 
and I'm like yes BHF BHF but I will not lie <laughs> you almost want to say it I right? want like, to say yeah. it I say it when she doesn't get it right now so it's yeah. fine I can say it um, but I'm waiting for her to start saying why I yes. think that's going to be the trick the yes. most curious face of a kid's life and yeah. I think that's the best face yeah. we should all be curious and yeah. every single day I think that's what we've lacked yeah. uh, growing up I realized that we a, a long long time ago before we moved towards perennials I'd asked you all how uh, how it's been working with brands It's oh, going yeah. to bring okay. this back <laughs> to that. Um, brands are my favorite, actually. Till date, uh, uh, it, it, it's it's like a it's like a right swipe on Tinder, you know. Hmm. It it you feel like you've matched, but once you start the conversation, then they just ghost you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's exactly like that. And and we've been through so many right uh, uh, swipes and matches, but uh, very few of them, um, you know, sort of end up working with you in the initial years because. Hmm. it's also a a, a fact about uh, trust and mm. the delivery that you have and yeah. the credibility the growth the scale and the funniest part about work in this space and i'm sure you know this best is it's a this or a that situation it's a catch 22 you yeah. either become you're too big yeah and that's why people work with you or they'll be like you're too big and that's why i don't want to work with yeah. you yeah yeah and then if you're too small be like you're too small how can you stay agile and relevant yeah. um and Across yet not board. become bureaucratic and and yes. too large and and be archaic. like I'm a government organization yeah. which ju- just that's just the, like 80000 yeah that's yeah. the that's the nightmare <laughs> so i think that's the the hardest part yeah. uh, or the phase yeah. of every organization that works with brands it's to find that balance to yeah. be in 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 the uh, top of mind uh, mm-hmm. for the category that you're in also at the same time be relevant you know to any mass uh, uh, brand that sort of wants to appeal to the this audience called the young people of our country yeah. for us what's been very exciting was we built the business model outside of having any brands working with us mm-hmm. uh, so because we decided that we are the brand ourselves so we build us and while we build in the process we'll work with people who yeah. believe in the same ideology yeah. we stayed away from alcohol brands we stayed away, away from tobacco brands we are we are a smoke free drug free festival um so as a as a brand which is not necessarily what some anybody would do in any in festival scale, right yeah. because that's where you get the most amount of revenues yeah. yes 100% and because selling al- alco babe is where you make your margins yeah 100% and uh, and i and i know this for a fact this was a very conscious call chance and i took we said no that's not what we want this festival to be this is this is like a edutainment festival this is an experience that people should attend and and have for the rest of their lives mm. and also have the potential of inviting their parents at some point be mm. like come have a good time at this festival yeah. there's no need of an intoxicant to spark your mind up or have fun or be cool or be yeah. relevant yeah. we're all misfits and we're all here together to celebrate each other together and yeah. that was the whole idea we yeah. call this a party for responsible youngsters that's yeah. how we promoted yeah. the festival last year last year that's what we did and and what's funny is when when we sit with brands and i have some really close brand friends now uh they have the same conversation with us they say how do you have so many young people come to a place and stay for a day or two without alcohol i said see that's the misconception it's not that we need the alcohol it's also the company it's also the people it's also the energy it's also the vibe i would say all of that is the reason why anybody stays in any festival is yeah. not the alcohol in the first place anyway you can get the alcohol anywhere anywhere right and i think so that's where we've really put our two minds to our best mm. use mm. with the team who sort of puts together that experience mm. it's not antos and chances festival we never did the festival i would always say our hustlers collective did it our space warriors did it these are programs that we've created for young people to work with us mm. when you ask a question as to how we are going to be relevant over the last 7 years and how we've tried to be very very different on a day to day basis it's because the biggest on ground team of young college kids in this country is managed by under 25 today mm. and when we spend time with each of these kids they are the ones giving us the dope of what's really going to work right they are yeah. the ones who are building this brand for us yeah. they are the ones who are the faces of under 25 in every single campus and place that we represent the brand yeah for me that's exciting this year two of our first employees at mm. under 25 the festival directors shrans and i have stepped back mm. right rishabh and anand are the festival directors of under 25 summit and this is a huge moment for people like us right who founded the company yeah. to let go of our most yeah, prized totally possession about, yeah. and then we've let go of it i think so what's really exciting is with brands the authenticity and the truth of why we're working towards what we're working really makes a difference mm-hmm. it's worked for us and we've been patient for years for somebody to notice that mm-hmm. 
Uh, so the first three years, we we did everything without a single brand backing us. Mm. Fourth year, we started with our first brand. Um, seven years into the game, I think we're really excited because a lot of conversations around the brands that we work with, mm. a lot of case studies that we worked on, a lot of results and 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 quality work is has already come out. Mm. So in the ecosystem, our conversations never. I don't call a brand a brand. Yeah. I call them a friend of under twenty five. <laughs> Hmm. Right or we call them a friend of under 25. Yeah. So the idea is friends of under 25 yeah. gets all the access to what we have. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry world. <laughs> uh, so the friends of under 25 gets all the access to what we have hmm. as as communication, uh, branding, ideology, uh, you know, research, data, whatever we've consumed and, and worked on, yeah. we're going to share it with a friend of ours. Yeah. I mean, like, let's build this together. So, Under 25 now works with the biggest of the brands, whoever they are, and tell them it's Under 25 in partnership with that brand. We're going out there together. Yeah. As opposed to being a white labeled brand that is now doing a service to another brand because we're not True. that agency. Yeah. Right. So, that's why it's meaningful. I always say brands need communities and communities need brands. And that's the only way both can thrive. Yeah. And today we are we are that community to many brands. Have you seen how uh, even how brands uh, the the growth in their understanding also kind of become a lot better in, yeah, in over the years? At, it has, and I think that uh, if we, if we date it back for Anto and I, the big problem was that age was a big function of ability. Hmm. Uh, what people would say is, "Oh, like can I trust you with my money because you're this young?" <laughs> Right, like holy and shit, you're so young. I'm like, uh, that's, man, that's like, why me and Rohit start wearing pants because you'll always go in shorts for meetings. Beards. Beards. Oh man, yeah, way to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we needed it. I grew a beard for that. I grew a beard for internal reasons that people would take me more seriously in the office. Yes, uh. partly true, partly it was brands. Partly we were like, we walk into a today, I walk into a brand room, be like, what's your age? We'll uh, tell you after uh. the meeting. Now, continue. The meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we always, and now that like, I think we look older than we are, and yeah. I, I, I'd like to think that because every time we ask that, get asked that question, people yeah. are like, so how old are you guys because you're running under 25? And we're like, what do you think? And they'll say whatever, and we'll be like, yes, you're yeah, right. That's, that's the right answer. That's the right answer. So, so in any case, I mean, the idea was that. Age was a big function of ability and that was the problem that we were facing at that point of time, which is how does a brand trust you mm. early into the journey? And there were some over a period of time that really, they they were backing the horses, not the race. They they were like, okay, if Ando and Shreyans are running this, and I think that like the entire team that is putting together and everybody who's come together, there, there's a team of 300 people who work on the festival. The average age of that team is about 21. So... It is truly the youngsters' energy coming in one place together. And when that happens, a brand needs to trust it. Yeah. That trust took a while to build, but I think it was like a long-term game with long-term people. Yeah. And I think that's that's how we yeah. like to position it. Just do and it I long. think, see, the, the beauty is, you know, we're not married. Uh, <laughs> we don't have kids. Uh, parents are still there to back us. And uh, we're blessed with the right people around us. And I think I cannot we cannot discount any of this yeah. for the privilege that we're sitting here and speaking yeah. with. Uh, I wouldn't say any of that is, is going to happen for everybody. Yeah. It's just that we've worked really hard, tirelessly for three years straight, even with no brands around us. And I think that's the, the key message that I want to put out to anybody who's listening to the podcast mm. is that it's not about cracking the first brand deal. It's about surviving the 999 days without one. Uh, so agree. that's what I think that's what really got us yeah. the brands that we have. Yeah. What's next for you guys? Um, I know that the the next edition is coming up, but what what else is? Shreyans is domination. Shreyans is getting married, guys. Really, that's how you wanted to end this podcast. <laughs> really, that's what we're going. Congratulations! To. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true by any means. No, I don't really. Your dad would be happy. Dad would Shadi be too happy. Kab karega, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, as as popular opinion does exist, no, that is not, not the truth. Okay, uh, but. Thanks, Anto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't get mad, Shans. I'm scared. Please oh don't do God. this to me. Yeah, but uh, I think what's next for us is the most exciting um, uh, few years ahead um, because we've mapped some of the most exciting problems for us to solve. Mm. Uh, parenting is one of them. Mm. Education is another. Mm. Mental health, wellness, and overall wellness as 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 a property, as mm -hmm. a concept uh, mm -hmm. for young people, is something that we're closely looking at. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and last but not the least, I think what's very exciting for us is to reimagine um, everything to do with um, the youth, right? Mm. The youth culture. Mm. Because people say building youth culture is, for us, we want to make it as hyper-local as possible. Mm -hmm. So today, every campus that we work with is going to have a hyper-local under-25 community. Mm -hmm. That for me is exciting. So I think reimagining how communities are built and how to scale that up. Mm. And how to sort of build that uh, movement that mm. sort of really reflects and represents a generation uh, that can make Anto and Shreyans completely uh, replaceable mm. uh, with the idea of, of like young people always going to take leadership and move forward. We just be the facilitators. We're, we're just the people who happen to be at the forefront of this movement. But there there is a whole generation of 633 million people who are going to run this. Yeah. So that's and, what we're up and to. And also, I think that our, our aim... I think there are very few companies out there today who are trying to be more emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. There are very few companies out there who are more, who are even focusing on the topic and understand that it is human connection. At the end of the day, you're bringing True. humans together. True. You are all working towards something together and mm. it is a community organization. Mm. The, uh, the more emotionally intelligent we get as not just a generation, but as under 25 and our company ourselves. Yeah this is going to become bigger and bigger in terms of a movement mm. simply because of how we choose to treat people. And for us, I think personally, it's so important that everybody comes together and that energy comes together. Yeah. And just the hope is that in the years to come, we become the most emotionally intelligent versions of ourselves or yeah. at least keep trying. Yeah. And also in the in the journey of that make under 25 that a extension global as well. phenomenon yes. Yes. And, get, and get Obama yes and get Obama Obama are you listening <laughs> please come <laughs> it's gonna yes. happen mate yeah uh, so towards the end of every episode we do this random thing called humans of advertising it's evolved mm -hmm. in multiple shapes and forms so some questions stay the same some evolve um, it's also like it's, it's not pertaining to what you do but more about you um, so um, what is that one thing which which People who would be surprised to know that you're a you're a fan of or you're obsessed with, which is something you do on a day to day basis, which mm -hmm. people wouldn't think you'd actually be interested in. Wow, I have one, but you go for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So, I'm also doing Reiki. Okay. Which is a Japanese form of healing, mm -hmm. and I'm a level away from becoming a grandmaster. Okay. Um, nobody has a lot of people that I really? have met. Yeah, see, there we go. So this is this is the correct answer. <laughs> Crazy guy. You know, you know why Reiki? I can live a peaceful life because he does Reiki. I just have to be like a nice guy around. Him. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think that it's just it's just respecting uh, energy for yeah. what what yes. it is and yeah. like having the right kind of energy. And I think that for both Anto and I, the Energies. There is a very, very, there is a very, very strong energy match. Mm. Uh, we we work together the way we do because I think we truly understand our patterns of who yeah. we are as people, our energies, and all of that comes together. And this is being built because yeah. of that. Let yeah. go, man. Yeah. Thank you, Shans. Thank you. Means, means a lot. <laughs> see and see, this, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it is truly building more emotionally intelligent. Yeah. And I think that the thought of being more emotionally intelligent comes from the fact that uh, spirituality yeah. as a topic is of interest to me yeah. which a lot of people uh, think that that's not uh, I mean that's not I'm something that they would more relate. and more young people who are interested in spirituality it's, which is actually quite interesting yeah and yeah. it's also it's it's also uh, a lot lot to do with more conversations about it mm. on yeah. things that we have access also to it became cooler yeah which is which is what I'm like technically more conversations make it look like the in thing yeah so I think for me um, so one of the things I used to do a lot, I, I don't think the audience who listens to this podcast or people who know me after, uh, with this avatar of mine know that much about this side of my story. But I play for a band called Atma and I've been playing music for the past 15 years, 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, I've played, I think, 200, 250 shows. What, what do you play for the band? I uh, play the guitar. Huh. Um, and I've we've made original music. And we've, apart from he's, he's selling that short. He's yeah. not just the guy on the guitar. He is, according to me, and every time like I watched him on stage, he is the, he's the, re man. yeah, he's this, <laughs> he's this performer, right? So when he goes in front of the audience, 
there is this there is this entire energy situation that happens there's a new me the so you would not see me as anto co-founder of under 25 on stage with atma yeah. i'd be a complete wreck on stage like yeah. i'd be jumping from one corner to the other yeah. like imagine that right like i'm sitting at office i'd be talking about like numbers and how to figure out this pitch and go here and do this festival that evening my team comes to the gig and i'm this crazy weird guy who's jumping on stage <laughs> being a weird guy on stage and really getting people to groove yeah and i think music uh, has been very close to me because i also uh, come from a, a house a home where my mom and dad really passionate musicians and uh, my sister also sings and and re- really love music so music is a decent escape i used to play with the band very very often long back yeah. but now i'm really busy with work so we don't i don't play that much with the band mm. i'd be hopefully my 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 personal goal is to come out with my own, own album by the end of this year oh nice uh, this year meaning 2020, 2020 yeah. um and the aim is sort of really sort of catapult on that uh, experience mm. to sort of you know regroom myself recreate some parts of what i've always wanted to recreate yeah. so i think that's that's what uh, is exciting for me i also really love massages i i, I don't <laughs> think i've ever said that um that just um, sounds yeah like the, the <laughs> i'm not saying the non bangkok <laughs> kind of massage guys fair good good thanks for clarifying yes, yes yeah it's it's not boom boom <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's basically uh, something that i really enjoy it's therapeutic for me yeah. it's um, not just like a full body massage it, even like i like, cannot like, I, like i have weird things about people touching me yeah <laughs> like i cannot get a massage you cannot get a massage i also so, do this thing in the morning where this is my morning routine if the day is good and i've had the time to sleep i just put this uh, sauna face mm-hmm. sauna mm-hmm. um and i just get it on my face while listening to music mm. i think it's the most beautiful way to get into a deeper <laughs> sense of meditation self care so. for the win man yes. <laughs> that's that's another thing i like what what's yours what's my weird this thing yeah um i watch a lot of tech unboxing videos that's my thing <laughs> mkbhd like, what mkbhd um jo- john morrison nice um austin evans oh uh, these are hectic unbox therapy unbox yeah, therapy yeah, yeah everything yes. Nice. Yeah, it's it's my it's my thing. The verge. Nice. nice. Um yeah, I can Are you, are you a tech junkie? Uh, I mean, are you a gadget junkie? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What's All your kinds. favorite gadget? That's tricky though. I don't think I have, I I love my phone. I love, my, love I phone? love my phone every year. Uh, mm-hmm. And the new one. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I think this call like I, this is what I use the most. I'll, I'll make sure that I upgrade every year and that's what Yeah. And I just said the same thing. I said this is what I use the most. Why do, why would I not invest yeah. in that? Right? Yeah. It's like the best thing to do. Yeah. Um do you guys listen to podcasts? Um, yes. Um yes. what's your favorite one? I, so I mean we have similar podcasts but I'll suggest something else suggest the other, hmm. right? Um uh, my favorite is How I Built This by Guy Raz. Yeah. Uh, it's of course the thing it's that I yeah. like really like grew up listening to over the last 3 years. Hmm. Uh, I say grew up because I think I truly grew up into the person that I am over the last 3 years because of the kind of things I heard the places i've been to the people i've met the opportunities i've had and the mm. blessing that 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 i've been you know sort of privy to mm. um how i built this has some of the most relevant episodes to the line of work that i'm in mm-hmm. uh my favorite one is richard branson of course a uh, really inspiration story also the kind of work that he's done is path breaking and uh, mm. really bending in terms mm. of thoughts mm. uh so i really like richard branson i also like I I forget the name of the founder but they run this company called Away mm. uh and they make um, travel bags mm. and now they're getting into all kinds of bags that sort of really help um, oh, nice. you know convenient packing and and moving mm. uh so Away is a really cool brand that that whose podcast I really like so these would be my top two suggestions if anybody's listening What about you Uh for me it was the Tim Ferriss show Yeah I I mean and it's it's one of those because I really love the way he asks questions. Hmm. I think his I think just the sheer number of questions he can ask knowing that he's got like well, I don't know like he's got like tons and tons of episodes right? Yeah yeah. It Studying video get, as well now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it can get very repetitive. The questions can get very repetitive yeah. but they're they're strangely not yeah. um I love the questions obviously love the guests on the episodes and I've been listening to that very very intently mm. one the other also is uh naval hmm. where, so naval ravikant has his own podcast which was in the micro yeah. podcast yeah. uh space essentially does one minute pieces of his tweets hmm. and there is one one episode which is about one and a half hours long hmm. which is all of his tweets basically put together yeah and he explains them and has an interview with his co-founder okay which has been one of the most mind blowing it was an experience 
that wasn't a podcast yeah. it was an experience and i think a podcast is uh, my favorite podcast also advertising is dead and the episode Excellent. that i really like is with episode these two 54, founders i think uh-huh. yeah I these think that's, founders that's the called uh, shreyans and antu i think they, they they've been really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was an interesting one yes sir that's a good one. A good <laughs> and guys uh, in cons- if you had us consensus as to why will advertising not die what will both of you in consensus say to that why will it not die yeah uh so like because we're all here is that your answer i was going to go that with that was very you judgmental were. yeah no yeah. because we're like i was i was thinking that you're going to continue saying it from we, there we we will take once more okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't think advertising is going to die advertising is going to evolve and it is going to constantly evolve in a way where it is going to keep up with not just the times but also the needs of people of that generation of that demographic mm mm-hmm. there is a lot that is going to happen which is going to get more and more interesting it is going to get more vernacular or is going to get more deep down into areas and demographics and geographies advertising is not going to die it's going to evolve and it's going to become more and more interesting as we go and that's what's exciting i think that's that's what it is for me i think advertising is basically uh uh like too polluted right now it's basically the way it's pro- portrayed uh, does not really do justice to what a- advertising really means mm-hmm. so i would say advertising is technically storytelling mm-hmm. um storytelling in multiple formats storytelling to the people who need to n- hear the story mm-hmm. and i think uh, that's the truest form of advertising that will survive mm-hmm. uh, everything else will fall out of the boat and and people won't call it advertising eventually but great stories being told about great brands that really need to talk to the audience that they represent and focus towards and then be authentic to how they want to tell that story i think that's an ad that will never die thanks so much for doing this guys this has been a lot of fun thank, thank you. you so much varun we took it in multiple directions yes <laughs> that's it's we always went, the we best part but 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 it's always yeah. the best part then we came back to advertising and that's it for this episode of advertising is dead Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Careers in the New, the new podcast series presented by Accenture. I'm your host Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay. In this podcast series, we'll get you the latest and greatest in the world of technology that's shaping the future of business as we know it. We're talking intelligent platforms, cloud, AI, blockchain, extended reality and a whole lot more. Every fortnight on Wednesdays, we'll have for you a hot topic with expert speakers from Accenture. talking about top trends in the space how these are changing the world and creating growth across industries and importantly we'll tell you how you can learn more build your skills and expertise to grow and stay relevant in your career episodes out on the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcast from Filter coffee is a fascinating beverage. You need to pick the right beans, blend them in the right proportion, roast them to perfection, and slow brew at the right temperature to get the perfect cup. Which is exactly like great conversations as well. You need to track down the most interesting minds, get them into their zone, and settle down for an unhurried, unscripted chat. And coffee for me is always, always, always best enjoyed with friends. I'm Karthik Nagarajan, and do share my table. as i meet some of the most interesting people i know and sit them down for a strong cup of coffee and an even stronger conversation join me every wednesday for a freshly brewed episode this is not frappe this is the filter coffee podcast <laughs>